Uh, hi everyone, I'm Emil. This is my friends uh, Bogdan and uh, Alexander. Uh, today we will teach you how to develop uh, the plugins or extensions for Visual Studio Code. Uh, I will show you how I usually do it and guys will help you if you will have some problems. Okay, uh, so let's start. Uh, if someone do not know, uh, Visual Studio Code is a new progressive uh, IDE or code redact uh, editor. Yeah, uh, it was announced at uh, by Microsoft at uh, 215. Uh, it's open source. It's licensed op uh, under the mid license. Uh, it completely. Um, the whole uh, source code is uh, completely opened and uh, hosted on GitHub. Uh, it's an Electron application, so it's the text editor uh, built using the web technologies. Uh, it has a lot of uh, extensions and plugins, so if you do not have something, uh, at the vanilla Visual Studio Code, you can search for uh, some extensions uh, or you can create your own. So uh, this is how it looks. I think it uh, looks awesome. Okay, uh, what extensions can do? Uh, Visual Studio Code have uh, different types of, of extensions which you can create. Uh, First of all, you can create the appearance of your uh, editor. I mean, you can create the theme for it. You can cre uh, create the type of extension which uh, adds the snippets for your code uh, to your text editor. Uh, you can create extensions which uh, add new key maps, uh, key bindings, and so on. Uh, so. The most powerful, in my opinion, extension is the general extensions, which are, uh, allow you to use uh, the whole API for extensions uh, of VS Code to create some uh, beautiful things, uh, to manage documents, to manage UI, and so on. You can create a type of extension which is called language server, which uh, provide you uh, VS Code the ability to work with your language. Uh, because VS Code do not uh, contain uh, the parsers and uh, language tools inside it. It uses them uh, in langu uh, language servers using the language server protocol. And you can add a new debugger. So it also contains uh, a special debugger protocol. <coughs> so, uh, What extension is? Extension is just a Node.js library. Uh, it runs on uh, extension host, which is uh, another, uh, uh, it's just a uh, Node.js uh, uh, process, uh, and it communicates with the main renderer process of Visual Studio Code using uh, IPC. So this is how it looks in general. Uh, I mean, you have the Electron, uh, which have, uh, Main render uh, main process and have renderer process and like a bunch of extensions uh, running in different processes. It also have uh, the uh, debugger protocols and language server protocols and like a processing of debugger and language is uh, usually located at another uh, process. So. What will we create today? Uh, today I wanted to, uh, to create with you the simple extension which can uh, help you to, for, uh, sh uh, to see how uh, powerful extension are. And it, uh, it will be just a pinger extension. So um, what we will use today, we will, uh, I will show you how to use notifications, input forms, status bar, review and content provider of uh, Visual Studio Code. Okay, Let's, uh, how uh, extensions can be created. 
First of all, uh, you need to have Node.js and Visual Studio Code itself. Uh, with Node.js, you can uh, install the Yeoman. It's a tool to create uh, and manage boilerplates. And you, can, uh, you need to install the generator for it, which is called generator code. So after you install it, you can just type your code. And it will give you a console uh, application to uh, create the boilerplate. It will give you. Uh, it will ask you for some questions, like uh, which type of uh, extension want you create, uh, which technologies want you create. Actually, you can write the extensions uh, in two ways. You can use TypeScript or JavaScript. Uh, for extensions. I prefer to use TypeScript because it's very powerf powerful and allows you to not uh, to have a lot of uh, like runtime exceptions based on types. Okay. Uh, you can, uh, I want you to download the source code of this application. Uh, it is hosted on GitHub. Uh, please download it and open it in Visual Studio Code. So, uh, and using this code, I will, using this Git repo, I will uh, show you all the steps. So, so is it okay? Can I start uh, development? Okay. Mm. So after uh, cloning the Git, um, after cloning the Git repo, we will have um, this repo, and I uh, want you to check out the first tag. With, uh, <coughs> okay, here we have uh, at the tech uh, V uh, zero point zero point one. We have uh, initial setup of extension. I mean, this is what you will have after you uh, after you run your main generator. So, what do we have here? We can see that uh, actually uh, extension looks like the average uh, or general uh, Node.js library. We have uh, package JSON. We have a uh, couple of files regarding to uh, TypeScript. And we have um, source, la uh, source directory. Here at source directory, we have uh, initial extension code, which will just doing, uh, just showing you hello world message. So, how it works? Here at package.json, we have a couple of uh, fields which are uh, used by Visual Studio Code to understand how your extension works. Uh, first of all, we have the main, uh, which will show us. Uh, which will show to Visual Studio Code where, where the main file or your, of your extension is located. Then it uh, contains uh, contributes field, which shows the uh, Visual Studio Code what your extension can do and how it can uh, use the Visual Studio Code. So here we just define the command uh, called extension dot hello world. This command is uh, it's a name of uh, it's actually the name of 
event which will be generated by Visual Studio Code. So inside uh, the editor, you have the global event bus, which uh, have uh, which can generate and uh, emit, uh, emit the extension uh, th this um, these comments. So here we uh, register the event hello world, and uh, another one. Uh, in the uh, important field is activation events, uh, which says our uh, IDE on which uh, events it should uh, activate our extension because uh, Visual Studio Code activates it the extensions lazily. Only when you need them, uh, it will activate them to save your resources. So. Here we say that uh, when the event extension dot hello world appears, we need to activate our extension. So uh, let's check what this uh, extension doing. Uh, Visual Studio Code by default and uh, human generator allows us to run the extension in two modes to debug the extension itself or uh, to run the tests. So right now we will run test, uh, run extension. Okay, let's... Um Just Okay, uh, I think uh, it cached something uh, from my previous installations. Excuse me for these uh, errors because um, just give me a chance to clone it. Cloned this project, and it's uh, run for you. 
Let's mm -hmm. install it, like the uninstall. Uh -huh. And when I press F5, I can't see anything in, in the debug console or anything, so that might be the problem. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so you, you you have this error, yes? You have the same error? I was going to run it. So I guess you can just show the code here because. Just go to the next Yeah, uh, okay. Um, for them it's running, so. Okay, uh, yeah, I think uh, there is something cached in my file system. Uh, uh, so let's just check out to the second part. Uh, okay, uh, this, uh, the second uh, the second tag is like uh, uh, it's um, it contains the uh, files. It contains the layout which I prefer to use well uh, when I'm. Uh, developing extensions. Uh, here I'm uh, just uh, moved the tests folder from the source uh, from the source folder. Uh, here I also added the index.ts. Uh, at the tests, index.ts uh, is a main file to run the tests, and in this uh, file you can. Uh, create, uh, set up your test runners, and Visual Studio Code will run this uh, index.ts uh, when you uh, run the tests. So here I added uh, functionality to, uh, to take the, uh, to run the tests with coverage, yes. Uh, so I also changed a couple of uh, things in uh, TypeScript config and TypeScript linter. So uh, just check uh, what changed it. And it's uh, just my uh, preferred layout for uh, extension development. OK. Uh, Let's check uh, the third version of uh, of our extension. This uh, let's check what changed. Um, here, I started to uh, change the actual code of extension using the uh, some API commands. So uh, here, I added the ability to ping some hosts and show the messages uh, about the, this ping. Uh, you can see this is a couple of uh, calls of the uh, VS Code API. Uh, here we can see show input box, uh, which will give us, um, which will show us the uh, input box and return the uh, t text typed in this input box. And I also have the uh, show information and show error message uh, calls. Uh, so let's try to uh, run this. Okay, uh, I also renamed the name of uh, the command we will uh, fire. So right now it calls ping host. Let's specify the host. And after the ping, we have this uh, message. Uh, which says us that this host is alive, uh, shows us the IP address of this host, and shows us the ping. So um, 
please try to do the same. Just uh, uh, run it. And uh, what I also did here, uh, I added a uh, status bar item. What is the status bar? Status bar is this uh, blue line at the uh, bottom of the uh, Visual Studio Code. It contains some useful information and also it contains uh, the buttons which you can tap. Uh, so. Here I am crea uh, created the status bar item uh, with the pink uh, text, and here I how to create it? Uh, we need to call the create status bar item uh, API method, and it will give us the status bar uh, item um, object. With this object, we can uh, we can manipulate the uh, appearance of our status bar item. Like here, uh, I'm setting the text for it. Uh, here, I'm uh, setting the command it will fire, and eventually, we need to uh, call status bar item dot show to show it. So let's check how it looks. Yep, here at the bottom we have a uh, pink button and when we, we will uh, press on it we will also have this uh, input box to uh, ping the host like Hmm. Okay, Google is down. Uh, so, another one uh, important thing I changed here is the activation event. As you remember, previously I uh, used the activation event of uh, command pin uh, extension dot hello world uh, to activate our extension but right now I changed it to asterisk uh, and it means that our uh, extension will be activated on any event which actually means that our extension will be activated right after the startup of uh, our editor. I use it uh, to be able to show this uh, pink button because we need to have it at the start of the editor. So uh, be careful with this uh, appearance of your extension because um, you can just uh, slow down your uh, editor if you will not be careful. If you will have some like a, uh, heavy tasks. Okay, uh, let's go a little bit deeper. Okay, we can see that uh, in the source uh, directory we have a lot of uh, files added. Uh, what did I do? I tried to, to implement the tree view, which uh, you can see here. This is uh, the tree views. Uh, and I added uh, the same thing for our uh, extension. I also uh, refactored some items like uh, main extension file. Uh, so the main file is, is the pink tree provider, uh, which uh, contain four classes, uh, three classes. Uh, it contains class pink tree provider. Uh, which implement the interface uh, tree data provider from Visual Studio Code uh, API. Uh, 
uh, I also created uh, two classes called uh, prop tree item and prop pink tree item, which implements the tree uh, extends the tree item uh, classes. What is this? Uh, so the tree item uh, represents the item in the tree. So this, uh, all of these uh, files here, for example, there is a tree items. The, the tree data provider is the class which will provide for Visual Studio Code all these items and uh, will show the uh, will provide the whole uh, hierarchical structure of this tree. So uh, let's start with the like uh, uh, easiest ones. Uh, tree items is uh, just uh, uh, data classes which contain uh, which contain couple of uh, fields. Uh, so, uh, one of the mm, important fields are uh, label, which will uh, which uh, provide the label for the tree item. Uh, another one important uh, field is the ID. ID is a uh, unique ID uh, for the whole uh, tree. Uh, and Visual Studio Code will understand how your uh, will differentiate your three items between each other. Uh, yeah, here uh, I'm creating the ID. Yeah, and so uh, one of the another important uh, things are uh, collapsible state, uh, which will say uh, Visual Studio Code uh, how uh, is your uh, three item collapsible or not. So you can see this is the collapsible item and this is not collapsible item. Uh, yeah. So uh, that's all for uh, three items. Uh, let's look on the um, three provider. Uh, this class should implement three data provider and contains uh, two uh, important methods. One of them is the get children. It's the main important method because uh, this method should uh, give to Visual Studio Code the ar uh, array of the items uh, at, at which uh, for the certain uh, which are the children for the certain uh, tree item. For example, if we ha uh, here we have the SRC uh, tree item, and for it, uh, this get children should return the array of these three items. Uh, the code is very simple for it. Uh, we just check that uh, which type of element do we have, and just uh, return the array of the children's for it. For the elements at the root of the tree, right here, like here, uh, the element will be undefined. So uh, let's check how it works. OK. Uh, so. Uh, here we have new tab at this uh, this place, uh, which will show us our tree. And right now it's empty. So uh, let's check how it works. Uh, I will call pink again. And right now uh, it shows us the messages the previously, but most important, it adds the new. Uh, item for this tree. And we can see this is the uh, host and this is the pink for it. So, mm, runs pretty easy. 
to be able to show this uh, tree at, mm, at this uh, view, we also need to uh, add uh, special fields for package.json to the contributes uh, folder, uh, to the contributes uh, object. Uh, we added the view containers and views. Uh, these two fields just explain for us uh, our uh, for editor uh, which trees and which views will we have. So uh, right now I can uh, show you how to, for example, create the new one uh, tree and uh, tree item, and you can uh, just do it with me. So, um, let's do it. Um, you can uh, code, uh, you can copy and paste the uh, one of the previous uh, uh, one of the previous uh, classes here. So it's nothing special. Uh, it's nothing um, hard to do this. So uh, at, the, at this three item, I want to show the IP or uh, the actual IP of this host. Uh, so let's cha change this ping uh, for IP. What? Probably you want a string instead of a number. Yeah, exactly. Thank you. Um, so, right now I have uh, declared the uh, tree item class for uh, to represent our tree item. Uh, so, to able to uh, sh to able to show it, uh, I need to add it to the children's of the uh, pink tree item. Let's do this. Uh, just adding a new line here uh, and changing it for. Uh, Uh, okay, let's check how it works, if it works. Yeah, here we also have, uh, as previously, this uh, tree view. So here I, we added the new f uh, field here to show the IP of the uh, our host. So uh, I think it was was not so hard. Yeah, uh, and I think the last but not least for today. Um, So, uh, for the 
at the last uh, tag here, uh, I added the ability uh, to open the documents in our uh, uh, using our extension. So uh, I added the ability to show the full information of our ping uh, when we click on the three item of the, this ping. Uh, let's check what I did. So I added the uh, content provider uh, which uh, implements the text document content provider uh, interface and the the main uh, method of it is uh, called provide text document content, which uh, gives us the string. And this string will be the content of our document. Uh, this is a uh, very simple uh, class, like a, a very simple uh, function. To be able to uh, to be able to open the documents, we also need to uh, declare the scheme. So Visual Studio Code will be uh, will understand uh, which content provider should we use for uh, exact scheme. Here I uh, call it like a pink scheme. Um, and for at the final, we need to register this uh, content provider. So uh, here, here we are. Uh, how it? How would, do we do it? Uh, I call the register text document content provider, and then I uh, provide the scheme and uh, provide the. Uh, the provider itself. After that, we can uh, open the text documents using this uh, content provider. Uh, to do this, we need to create the URI, which uh, URI is just a uh, interface which repre represents the URI to file, which uh, uh, contains the path to file, scheme for it, and additionally it can uh, have the query. So after creating the URI, we can uh, show Visual Studio Code to open the text document uh, for this um, URI and show this text document. So it's uh, pretty simple. Uh, let's uh, check how it works. OK. Uh, here we have our three. And if we uh, click on it, uh, the new text document with the pink results will be opened. So uh, the content of this uh, text document is provided by our content uh, provider. Uh, so for today, I think uh, it's all that I wanted to show you. Uh, if you did uh, the same things for me, uh, like uh, with me, uh, you can ask any questions you have. Yes. Yeah. Uh, as you have showed in the tree provider, right? Uh, excuse me? Yeah. As you have showed in the tree provider, whenever yeah. we are doing a ping, you are adding google.com and the children over there. Yeah. I assume you will do ping again for the same host. Uh, we uh, so uh, as I said, we have the IDs for it, and these IDs are unique. Uh, here I'm using uh, the tree provider. 
I am um, using the uh, here. You can see I am creating the ID using the uh, like a index of the pink at the in the array of the all uh, probes. So it will be unique, and uh, Visual Studio Code will understand that uh, th this is the different uh, uh, three items, even if we will have the same host for it. So you can see, uh, I can ping it again, like a, yeah. My question was, I mean, if you want to map it to the same parent, being the same host, can we achieve that? Uh, yeah, of course, we can achieve that. We can. Uh, we need just to create some uh, more, uh, like a uh, uh, more complex logic here. To like a, maybe not to have the array. Maybe we need to have some uh, some object which contains like a key pairs with the uh, uh, the names of the hosts and uh, the probe results for it. Uh, it's actually able to do. So everything you need to do is uh, change the logic of this get children uh, function. Yeah. Makes sense. Yeah. Any other questions? Yeah, one more huh? yeah, yeah. No yeah. Problem. Currently, you are opening a test document, right? When yeah. You click on those three items. Yeah. Can it be achieved for the, with the help of WebView as well? Uh, can you repeat, please? Can it be achieved? With WebView. WebView, yeah, of course. Uh, we can create the uh, not only the text documents, we can open the WebViews, which uh, allows us to uh, show the uh, inter uh, like a HTML page. You can use the JavaScript in this page. This page will be rendered by uh, separate uh, by the separate uh, Node.js process, and showing the web view is the one of the ways to uh, create some custom UIs in Visual Studio Code. So usually, how it works, you create some uh, web view with the JavaScript inside it, and you, uh, your web view communicating with your uh, extension using the web sockets. Yeah. And you can uh, like uh, uh, do some logic uh, in the web views. Uh, yeah, but mm, you can do this. It's uh, not so hard, uh, actually. So. Uh, Let's continue our. Uh, so, at the like a conclusion, uh, I want to mm, say what extensions cannot do. Uh, extensions cannot manage the document object model for the uh, Visual Studio Code itself because it runs in the separate uh, process and. It is the limitations uh, to provide the security. Uh, extensions uh, cannot use the node native modules because uh, native modules, uh, to use them, you need to recompile your extension, uh, your Visual Studio code each time you like uh, install the new extension with the native uh, modules. So this is uh, the limitations of the Visual Studio code extensions. Uh, here I have the bunch of useful links which I usually use to develop the extensions uh, and just to use the Visual Studio Code itself. Um, so uh, the, uh, the most preferred for me is the Visual Code extension samples when you can have uh, everything, uh, uh, d different uh, examples of extensions uh, built by Microsoft uh, and Visual Studio uh, VS Code can do that is a very uh, interesting site uh, si uh, site which uh, shows you how to uh, use your Visual Studio Code like a pro. 
So, uh, any questions? Any, um, oh. Okay. Thank you for your attendance. I was glad to create these presentations for you.